Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America online, thisweekinamerica.us. November 10th, 1969, Sesame Street made its television debut, a show that has become part of our culture, a beloved favorite among children and adults alike, one of the most successful children's shows in broadcasting history. In the book, The Inside Secrets of Sesame Street, author Dr. Lucille Burbank goes behind the scenes for a fascinating look at the show's pioneers, performers, puppeteers, writers, directors, researchers, of course, Big Bird and Kermit the Frog as well. Dr. Burbank saw the magic firsthand as a member of the show's research department. She's worked in educational media and technology for over 35 years, a consultant for Sesame Workshop, NASA, and the New Jersey Department of Civil Service. She's taught media design and production courses at various colleges. Considered an innovator, Dr. Burbank was one of the first to use holography in the classroom. She's written a range of articles on integrating media and technology in education, conducted numerous workshops, presented at conventions and conferences, a Bachelor of Science degree from Antioch College, a Master's of Education from Temple, and her Doctorate from Temple, named one of the top female executives, professionals, and entrepreneurs, and author of The Inside Secrets of Sesame Street. Back with us on the program, the author, Dr. Lucille Burbank. Dr. Burbank, welcome back to the program. Great to have you with us once again. It's a pleasure to be here. It really is. And I get so excited to share whatever information uh, you ask me and it's an, an exciting subject matter. It really is, and the book is so well done, and you've got everybody connected with the show in the position where they're so proud of the show, and they open up, and you can I can tell the passion in your voice as we're talking. I can tell the passion uh, with these people that you interviewed, the pioneers of the show in the book, The Inside Secrets of Sesame Street. Just to go back for a second, talk a little bit about the, the research that you did. You were in the research department, and you actually, sometimes you think of research, it's like, okay, this is uh, down the chain. You might make a suggestion, pass it along to somebody, pass it along to somebody else and somebody else. You actually were a very important, the research department was a, a very important part of the, the program, and you had the power to really put, make changes in, in the program. Yeah, it was really a wonderful opportunity, and it was icing on the cake for, for me uh, being in the field of educational media and loving to work with children. So having this opportunity uh, to be a consultant uh, was just heavenly and very exciting. One of the things a consultant does is she sees or he sees what is needed. And when I went to the research department, there were a couple of things I could see that were needed. But one of the biggest things I saw was that the research, the, the reports of the research that was being done were written up in an informal way, in a newsletter uh, kind of format. And I thought for some particularly big studies and um, significant studies, we had to really go away from the newsletter format and write in a very formal uh, study um, uh, kind of way. Right. And so the study on fire safety was huge because um, preschoolers and especially disadvantaged preschoolers or lower socioeconomic um, preschool children were, there were a lot of fires. And it was research that could really help them eliminate um, eliminate their fear. For instance, one of the things we found out in research is that they were scared of the firefighter because when he or she would put on his mask and, his, and suit up, he looked like Darth Vader. So instead of thinking the firefighter was their friend in this situation and would help them get out safely, they would tend to run from, uh, from the firefighter. Yes. That's just one example. And so what we did is, of course, um, after we did the research, found out what was what they knew, what they didn't know, and what they needed to learn, um, then, of course, we would um, provide television instruction and showing the firefighter 
um, as a person and then what he needs in this situation to be safe and that they shouldn't, of course, run from him. Um, the study was, I, I looked at it and I said, you know, um, it needs to be written up in a very formal, very um, professional, it couldn't, it couldn't uh, a newsletter format with, with this significant study Study, and then there were others, too, I'll name as we go on. But um, fire safety is a good example. So I took the data, and um, she was very gracious because I was just an intern then. Um, and so I wasn't um, – I was on my way to being hired, but this is one of the um, – ways I could show them that I could benefit Sesame Street and be hired as a full-time consultant. I started as an intern during the summer, and so I took it home. I analyzed it. I used um, computer um, analysis, and I wrote it up in a very formal study, and it really did change and give it the respect it needed. I mean, there's other studies that were important, but, you know, you could you could get away with a newsletter. But this one had to go in a very uh, formal way. Yes, you can see that it was it was so important. Right. And it shows what you talk about in the book. The book is The Inside Secrets of Sesame Street. The author, Dr. Lucille Burbank, with us on the program. Her website is drlucilleburbank.com. Book is available all across the country. You can get information by linking onto our website, thisweekinamerica.us. The importance of having fresh ideas and basically a, a new set of eyes looking at a problem. You were an intern, and basically when all ideas were on the table, if somebody had a thought, they really welcomed that thought, didn't they? They did. They were very receptive. To, and they always have been uh, the workshop, Sesame Workshop, the creators of Sesame Street, to criticism. And uh, they were open, and uh, Dr. Valeria Lovelace, who um, was assistant vice president of research, she said, okay, let's, let's go there, let's see, and let's make a report that I think we need here and we need to have more reports like this. And so um, we both were very excited and I brought it in and and she jumped up and down and, you know, we went from <laughs> there and then we did reports on child abuse and how to teach that and we make recommendations. The research doesn't just do the research, it makes recommendations to the producers and the head writer and the, and the writers um, on just how to show this. And it gives example after example after example so that um, we're trying to solve the problem as well as identify the problem. You know, it's interesting, the background that you had as you were working on your dissertation, you had a scholarship and were able to do long studies of three of the most successful children's programs, besides, of course, Sesame Street, Captain Kangaroo, and Mr. Rogers. And you talk about Captain Kangaroo in the book, The Inside Secrets of Sesame Street. He basically was uh, laid the groundwork, didn't he? Laid the way for Sesame Street with what he did with, it, with that remarkable show of his. Yes. He really did, because Bob Keeshan, who played Captain Kangaroo and is the cre was the creator of Captain Kangaroo, he, re he realized that children can understand anything at whatever age as long as you explain it to them in, a, in an, a, an appropriate manner, meaning using the vocabulary they understand, using pictures they understand. But he would go and explain Einstein's relativity or how to build a bridge or any such um, what we would consider very theoretical issues. And he would explain this to his audience, and he felt nothing of it. Um, 
so that later when I interviewed Jeff Moss, for instance, who um, also worked on Captain Kangaroo and then was also uh, transferred over and worked on Sesame Street, he said we really didn't understand what a precursor this show was in terms of developing a curriculum. Um, and we could have, and we they did in some respects, they did start over with their own curriculum, but they really realized after all was said and done that Captain Kangaroo was doing what they do now in a just a more formal mat- manner. And it was interesting yeah. reading about how he would screen all the commercials and it would drive the sales department at CBS <laughs> crazy. <laughs> A commercial at that time, it wasn't uncommon to say, go have your mom buy this type of thing. He wouldn't allow those commercials. And what at one point, the salespeople really wanted the show taken off the air. But the chairman of CBS loved the program. And he says, no, we're going to leave it alone. Oh, yes. Paley, Chairman Paley, really supported this program. And they did briefly take it off the air. Uh, but it was only briefly because um, the parents' outcry was humongous, and and Paley just went again and said, "No, no, no! This is a <laughs> wonderful show." Um, we he wished um, Bob Keeshan wished it could have gone on and on, but it went on pretty long. I mean, as he said in the beginning of one of his books, he said. If I had, it, it, I think it developed in 1955, or debuted in 1955. If I had told people in 1955 this show would go on for almost 30 years, they would have locked me up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mentioned Captain Kangaroo, <laughs> and, and everybody knows who he is, so he, he made a significant impact. Uh, that's one of the stories in the Inside Secrets of Sesame Street by Dr. Lucille Burbank, our guest on This Week in America. Or the website is drlucilleburbank.com. It's interesting, among the chapters there, you talk about uh, special effects and how much is too much, what you should do with special effects. And then you, you also talk about celebrities, and celebrities literally were lined up to work for Union Scale, which is like next to nothing to, to be on Sesame Street, and they had what they called the James Earl Jones effect. And I guess if he's going to read the alphabet, he has my attention as well. That is such a wonderful... James Earl Jones had such a presence on television. Yes. By the way, he was in the first uh, episode that debuted um, in on November 10th, 1969. And so he was a long-time person there. But he came on and he did the alphabet with such presence and you know his voice is so famous yes um it's been and it has that wonderful presence um so after he did that everybody was so taken by that that um when anybody else came on any other celebrity did the alphabet they were coaching that celebrity in doing having developing their own style of presence, just like James Earl Jones. Um, But they called it the James Earl Jones effect. It's in the book, The Inside Secrets of Sesame Street, and I can hear him read the alphabet now, say the alphabet as, as we're talking. It's interesting, too, as the show evolved and trying to hold the attention of the young children, the the viewers, and they had the distractor method where they would actually go in and test to see whether these elements were holding their attention. Talk about that because it was very important uh, to get the child to watch, but to maintain that that attention of when they lost it to go on to uh, another topic. Yeah, Dr. Palmer, when I interviewed him, of course, I spoke about his uh, creation of the distractor method. And what it was is we would have uh, segments of Sesame Street on the TV screen. Then there would be toys to play with. Then there would also be another distraction of a slide show constantly going. So if the child 
of course, played with the toys or looked at the slideshow more than the various segments, Dr. Palmer would would record this and go back and say to the producers, you have to go back to the drawing board. This is not keeping the child's attention. I've got a child playing with dogs and trucks as he's watching this segment. This other, you know, this other segment, children were too involved with the slide presentation going on or the slideshow going on. And then he would also come back and he would grade their segments, the producer's segments, which he laughed, <laughs> and we both laughed about that. He said, okay, there were times I'd come back after doing my research, and I'd give the producers an A grade, and they'd be up and on, you know, just like at school. Oh, my gosh, I got an A on this segment. And then there were other times he did the distractor method, and, of course, you know, it didn't work so much. Yes. And boy, if he came back and gave them a C, you never saw producers and directors <laughs> go right back at that segment. <laughs> so it was, fast. It was like being back in school. Uh, the Inside exactly. Secrets of Sesame Street, Dr. Lucille Burbank, the, the author, our guest on the program. Time always goes by so quickly. Several minutes left in the program. I want to talk about something that's important, uh, special education. It really was at the forefront. There was a great story in the book of uh, a lady who had two sons, one, two and a half, who had Down syndrome. And she thought he would be the one that really wouldn't follow along. And she was amazed at, at the effect Sesame Street had on this, this young boy. Yes, it was a wonderful, thrilling um uh, letter they got. It, um, Emily Pearl Kingsley uh, has been the writer for Sesame Street since 1970, and she also had a Down syndrome son, so she was very involved in special education along with Sesame Street and would write these shows for special um for the special children or an audience and talking about uh, why they are so special and making them feel comfortable um, in the mainstream. At any rate, when I interviewed Emily Kingsley, she told me about this letter and she said it was so exciting. Um, The woman said, okay, I have a Down syndrome and I have another child without Down syndrome, and I'll just put the down, I'll put them both together to watch Sesame Street and expect the Down syndrome child to be uh, the child with Down syndrome. I don't want to label a child, so I have to make sure how I say this. The, her child with Down syndrome, she expected him to be entertained and the other one to pick up some knowledge. Well, lo and behold, as you have said, she walked into the TV room one day and the child with with Down syndrome stood up and recited the alphabet twice in a row for her. This was revolutionary because people did not uh, feel that children with Down syndrome could learn. And so it revolutionized that whole exceptionality and to this day um down syn- children with down syndrome are learning they just go at a slower pace um but they do learn and get right up and can complete um levels of schooling uh, i'm going to take an extra couple minutes to talk about and get your thoughts on where children's television is today we're talking about the book the inside secrets of sesame street our guest is dr lucille burbank or website dr lucille burbank.com go to this week in america.us and link on uh, on directly first of all let's talk about sesame street and you talk in the beginning of the book this was after sesame street made the switch to to hbo and the new shows airing on hbo and it's sort of the new economics of trying to keep things funded and that's good and you understand that but talk about the impact that that has on what their initial mission was which was to get out to get children from all uh, social economic groups sure sure I know there was a lot of backlash when this happened 
this um, partnership, or not really partnership, but this deal of the workshop to join HBO. And this happened in 2015. Um, the deal was in August 2015, starting in the fall of that year, which is the usual time for Sesame Street to debut new episodes. They would maintain being with HBO for five years. So we're going on three years now. And uh, in, as 2000, the fall of 2018 comes around, the backlash was because it was free and people felt that now there's a divide and um, only the privileged can see the new episodes versus um, whereas before, for 45 years before this deal was made, uh, both um, economic levels, socioeconomic levels were seeing the new episodes. Um, I go back and forth on it and yeah, I understand yeah. what they say and the implications to that. But I think in my book, as I wrote about this, and I will write about it in more detail because I'll probably do another edition of the book, um, it's important that the Sesame Street model is saved, their television model of the way they blend education with uh, entertainment, and they blend it so beautifully that um, they're making learning fun which it really is, as we all know. Um, but sometimes, you know, if it isn't, if it's not um, in an inspirational, uh, done in a great way, uh, then you get bored with learning and then we get all sorts of these attitudes. So, yes, the other thing with Sesame Street is that it, um, it was losing it was it was the, the funding the the financial yes. Uh, yes. problem with Sesame Street because mainly there was video streaming as opposed to the sale of DVDs which are well video cassettes were out but even now the DVD uh, was the sales were down and there was more competition um, but mainly it. It had lost, I think, one year something like eleven million dollars. In Incredible. Revenue. Yeah, that's why you yeah. you can argue both sides of that because you have the economics that you have to deal with. That's that's the reality. There's so many great stories in the book, the inside secrets of Sesame Street, and you wonder if anybody could uh, could duplicate that. And I, it's. So key and jumps out as, as you read the book that they really had the best and the brightest that worked on this show. And the best and the brightest, if they didn't work on the show, they wanted to because they actually were able to uh, to affect change in the country with with, with the youngsters. And it's, it's such a powerful book. The Inside Secrets of Sesame Street, Dr. Lucille Burbank, the author. Her website is Dr. 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 Lucille Burbank dot com. Books available all across the country. Uh, you'll find information at our website. Of course, you can link on to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and uh, and get more information. Dr. Burbank, it's been fun having you on two programs. I, I really hope you do a, a third version of this, and uh, please stay in touch, and we'd love to have you back. And, and thank you once again for being with us. Oh, you're welcome, and I, I hope to do another version, and it's been wonderful doing these two programs with you and thank you so much you're such a fine interviewer <laughs> well you're very kind thank you and you're a, an excellent author and i really love the book and so many uh, so many more stories so i will encourage people to go buy the book it's called the inside secrets of sesame street dr lucille burbank is the author our guest on this week in america the website this week in america.us and we're back on today's program right after these messages stay tuned <laughs> 